Hi, this is John Lucas. I've noticed that skews come ground more different ways than a bowl gouge does. And I thought I'd kind of show you the differences this morning. As you can see from this view, I've collected a lot of skews and played with a lot of them over the years. They go from flat grinds to bedans to curved tips, convex grinds, over to some of the V-tools, homemade tools, and then down to my smallest, which goes down to eight thousandths of an inch for my micro miniatures. As I said, I've been playing with a lot of different skews. I'm guessing that this is probably more of a traditional style, pretty much square across the top. Uh, it may have come from carvers who originally thought, well, you know, after they started playing on the lay, thought they'd play with that. <clears throat> and I've collected skews up to very, very curved tip. Uh, these work very well for planing cuts. This one's a little hard to use for turning beads, although the long toe works really well for some cuts. As you can see for planing cuts, this is a very nice tool. The Bedan is a tool that was uh, came from France and is very similar probably to the straight tool. It's ground straight across, but it only has one bevel, where a lot of the other tools have two bevels. The Bedan is also a very clean cutting tool and useful for a lot of different cuts that you would normally use a skew for. When we talk about skews, the sharpness angle is fairly critical. This needs to be one of the sharper tools out there. And I'm going to call it an included angle. When you measure from bevel to bevel, this angle on this one is about 30 degrees. The angle on this one is about 45 or more. And you'll notice the difference in the length of the bevel on those. That comes into play in several situations. When you're doing a planing cut, it's kind of nice to have that long bevel. And using a uh, sharper tool at 30 degrees or 25 degrees gives you a very clean cut, but it can be a little grabby. The 45 degree bevel is a little bit harder to plane with. You have to concentrate a little harder, but it's a much better tool for reaching in and actually cutting a cove with the skew. If you don't have a measuring gauge, an angle gauge, a good judge of angle is one and a half times the thickness of the skew. If your bevel's about that length, that's about right. It makes it fairly easy to handle, but it's still sharp enough to really cut cleanly. You can't talk about skews without talking about an oval skew versus a flat skew. Flat skew is ground flat across the tip. An oval skew is round, round curved in this plane. Uh, I learned on an oval skew, and it's probably still one of my favorites. I don't see any real disadvantages other than it's a little hard to sharpen. Some people think that it's probably a little bit easier to roll during the cut. Um, however, you'll notice both of my skews have rounded bottom edges. I highly encourage you to do that on any one of the tools you use. You'll notice that I have a slight angle on mine. I prefer that straight across. Another thing worth discussing is whether you want what we call a flat grind or a convex grind on the sharpening edge. I've been playing with these chisels a lot. I actually hollow grind mine and then I sharpen them with a hone. So technically it's flat because of the tip, but I have a hollow grind here. This one has been ground, so it's convex on both sides. I don't really find any advantage to it myself. I've been playing with it quite a bit now, and I can cut my beads and planing surfaces about the same with either tool. I like uh, being, I think I can sharpen it more accurately uh, on the flat bevel. Now, of course, to try to make the tools a little more functional for your particular style, some have gone to a curved edge and some have gone to a straight edge. Personally, I prefer the straight edge, but the curved edge has some advantages. What it really boils down to, I think, is uh, which one you learn on. And, and there are certain cuts that will be easier with that skew. Now, a tool that came with a lot of the early sets was a V-tool. The V-tool was kind of used by pushing it straight in. And then you can turn a bead by simply pulling it across and shaping the bead. Um, somewhere along the line, I had a friend who was a professional turner, and he started using it somewhat like you would use a skew. 
using this planing edge to roll the bead with. Using the bottom edge. This one is a little bit grabby. Um, it takes a fair amount of skill to use. It's ground flat on both these angles because generally it was used as a scraper when it was sold with the kit. My friend developed different cuts with this tool because whenever he had one tool in his hand he would use it until he couldn't stop. Uh, that kind of sped up production on the work. Somewhere along the line somebody came up with a three-point tool and it works very similar in that you create the depth of the bead and then you pull it across the front and you roll the bead similar to the way you would that, that V tool. It's probably not a very good tool for planing with because it's very blunt. The angle is real coarse. The tool that's very similar to the skew is a large kind of a flattened spindle gouge. It's used very much like the skew in that you try to stay on the lower third of the cut. You can roll beads with it. And most people considered a uh, spindle gouge a little easier to roll a bead. And part of that may be if this is a convex area, which is probably what led to the convex grind on the skew. A little hard to roll a bead that small with a spindle gouge this size. Keith Tompkins has tried to take the skew in a little different direction by grinding the bottom somewhat convex and has a point. You get the advantages of kind of all three. Um, I can do planing cuts with it. You can roll beads with it. It's, it's a very forgiving tool when rolling beads. You can stick it straight in, get your V cut. You can also cut somewhat like a toe cut using the skew. And then roll your beads. So this is a very similar tool. It's kind of uh, taking all of the different versions of the different skews that I've showed you and put them into one tool. After playing with all these skews for many hours, um, I found that the most important thing is the practice. It's not which tool you use. So my best suggestion is to find someone in your club who uses the skew, pick up a skew similar to theirs, and just start turning. <laughs>